all about anti-inflammation, hydration, nutrition. Any tips for me? My question is... I'm total, I'm a total fan of you, Ashley. I'm so uh-huh. happy you joining us today for Skin School. It's such an honor and um, such an excitement for all of us. And it's so sweet of you to um, join us um, and, and share everything you know, um, or a lot of what you know with us. <laughs> and um, welcome. Thank you. I'm a fan too. I've got, I actually have, first of all, thank you for all of my goodies. Like these four big Dr. Stern boxes came and it was just like, luxury has arrived Aww. and I am I, I mean my favorite is the sunscreen droppers I mean yes this is genius by the way like the fact that you even thought of this is absolutely genius but I mean I'm sorry that I'm just I'm a fangirl right now because it's just right <laughs> next to me but I'm a, I'm also a mister so this is so good it's so good it's so good though that's like travel bag essentials no, oh, I'm so I'm so glad you have it all now, and I'm I, I I want you to try everything. It's all designed to make your skin as healthy and strong as possible. As what we are really intending right now, especially right now in these um, very very difficult times, to really stay as healthy and as strong as possible. And it also starts with our skin. You know, our skin. Yeah. If we are, you know, aggressively attacking our skin through everything if it's the sun or the or the pollution or even the HEV light or any um you know um you know laser treatments acid peels whatever you know if our our skin gets attacked all the time then you know it runs the risk to not perform that well anymore and you know we destroy skin barrier function and that needs to be avoided especially in these times and that's why I created this line to make our skin the best version possible so um let me know what you think <laughs> oh well i'm already my, my skin is soaking it up and it's already saying thank you <laughs> yeah you, you know what you're you're such an icon um and you know you you're um definitely non-mainstream you know and that's um what definitely puts us in the same same um little um box because it's it's really something i i believe that you know we're not always um you know, need to follow conventions and, you know, the social wisdom, but um, really go for your own beliefs and your own strengths. And, um, and you're such a great um, idol and, 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 and inspiration to a lot of us, um, you know, to, to really follow a new path. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. That's a very kind introduction. Um, <clears throat> I, it's very interesting because people have, have always asked me, how do you gain confidence? And it's one of the number one questions that I get asked. And I think that for me, it's just about being myself. And I think if more people tapped into figuring out who they are and being themselves, it would make for a much more confident generation. And, um, and, and that's really truly how I built my brand. I was just myself and it's kind of unconventional in so many ways in the last 20 years, things have completely changed, but 20 years ago, it wasn't conventional to be yourself. And, um, and I'm grateful that I never, you know, had to make a persona of this, you know, alter ego, Ashley Graham. It was just like, what you see is what you get. And here I am. Um, so yeah. It's, and you're still so young, you know, um, lots of people, when they get older, they come to this conclusion, you know, I'm really confident in myself, you know, to have that feeling when you're so young, it's um, very un- unusual. And I always, you know, to me, it's a total luxury to be myself and not follow conventions. And that's when you know, you kind of got to the point where you want to be. But, you know, for lots of, you know, and I have a 24 year old girl and I'm t- talking to a lot of um, teenagers as well and um, the young generation. And what you see is that, you know, also, especially because of social media, there's so much um, trends they have to follow, you know, the way we dress, the way we have to look, the way we put our makeup on, the way, uh, you know, our cheekbones look and all this kind of stuff, which presses them into into a, a model of not who they are, but who they I don't think they really want to be like this. They just feel that this is society telling them to be that way. And, and, and how could you 
be such a strong force when, when you're still so young? How did you do that? I think it's a really good question, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard yeah. because, uh, you know, social media wasn't around until I was in my early to mid, yeah, it was like I was walking into my mid 20s when I even just started Instagram. And I'm so glad that social media wasn't around when I was younger. I mean, I feel for this next generation that's coming up. It's a constant um, comparison. It's feeling like you aren't worthy because you didn't get the likes that someone else did. Um, I, there's all kinds of, of um, self-esteem issues that are going to be coming out of this that we're going to see the effects of on a big on a bigger scale than even that we see right before our eyes. But um, I think that there's also positivity when it comes to social media in the sense of like, if you have incredibly terrible acne, there are some girls out there that are posting those photos and you know you're not alone. Or you have cellulite, like, mwah, and you post about it and there's a bunch of other people that have cellulite that are kind of like, screw it, I don't care anymore. So there's community within, but the, the um, circling um, atmosphere of the community within has so much hate around it. And I think you really have to check yourself and not be fooled by the likes, not be fooled by the followers and, um, and really have some internal dialogue because this is just a thing that will tell you who you are, but you have to remind yourself that the world doesn't tell me who I am. I tell me who I am. Great. So for example, do you, do you like to, you know, walk around without makeup or do you always wear makeup or, you know, when you have, when you take a picture or selfie or whatever, is this something, you know, you just go with the naked truth as well and, and just like, be who you are or do you like to oh yeah I mean there is many a day I do not have makeup on in fact the only reason I even have a little bit of concealer and mascara and my I, I didn't even color in my eyebrows today I actually just put some eyelash I put eyelash glue in my eyebrows and brush them up to keep them up because they stay up but for me less is more when it comes to makeup um because I feel like beauty in just the raw canvas of a woman is so much fun. But then there's the other aspect of like makeup that is so much fun to do all the craziness um, and the artistry that's behind it. But for me, I mean, I, I say, I have these amazing affirmations that I say to myself. I feel like they're always ever evolving my affirmations because of whatever I'm going through in the moment. But when I was 18, 19 years old, I had to make them for that moment and they were, I am bold. I am brilliant. I am beautiful. I am worthy of all. I love you. And they really stemmed from not feeling smart enough, not feeling like I was worthy of the careers that I was up, the career that I was up for, um, my body constantly being manipulated and picked apart by an industry that had never seen a body like mine. Um, and then truly understanding that, like, if I don't love myself, who else is going to be able to love me? So words have more power than, um, than action sometimes. And, and then in some other cases, action feels like it has more power over words. So I try to really be careful um, about both of those things. Great. I saw your TED talk and um, I was really impressed. <laughs> Again, you know, it's not a matter of age, but um, you, you're pretty, pretty young, you know. And, um, yeah, I was. I great was. Power. was. Thank you. That was, oh my gosh, it was like eight, nine years ago. It's like so yeah, to think about. Yeah. No, it's great. So that's why I find it, it's a really an inspiration for every one of us, but also especially also for the younger generation. That's why I want you to really um, speak up to your entrepreneurism and 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 how how strong you really followed your path and you know how successful you are now it's 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 great i really um tip my head and um it's 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 wonderful so let's talk about skin a little bit you have you get so much makeup done all the time and um how do you prep your skin is this oh. is there any ritual you're doing well it's so funny because i've been I've been in the makeup chair since I was 12 years old and I didn't understand. I didn't even, I don't think I had a facial until I moved to New York city, which was like around 17, but I don't even think I probably got a facial until I was 19 because all these blackheads were just like all over my nose. My nose is super susceptible to blackheads. 
And, um, I started getting facials and I realized like, oh, it's like, it's a, it's a good cleanse for your face that you actually do need if you're getting like full face of makeup on every single day. So then that started coming into my like regime. And then from there I started like, you know, beyond clean and clear from when I was in middle school, <laughs> my, my idea of cleanser opened up. Um, and I, I never thought about the prep before a job until I started getting like that one random zit that I couldn't help but pop. And when I, when I popped it, it turned into a scab and it was like, what am I doing? Like, first of all, why am I getting these zits? Second of all, this is going to ruin my campaign that I'm shooting. So um, I actually started making sure that no matter what, no matter what, substance I was on, no matter how late it was, I was going to wash my face before I went to bed. And without a shadow of a doubt, religiously, I wash my face every single night before I go to bed. And um, I now use a vitamin C serum and then I use like a moisturizer, but, and an eye cream, but I, I hadn't started using a vitamin C until just a couple of years ago. Cause I didn't realize that it was absolutely imperative to be using a vitamin C, but, um, that's really how I prep my skin. There, there's some days where I'll throw on a face mask. Um, if I'm feeling like a little bit dehydrated or, yeah. um, or if it's something that I know is really important, but the, the other problem is sometimes you show up on set with a makeup artist and you've, you've just had this like gorgeous mask on and then they take a little bioderma with a cotton and then they're like, take it all off. And you're like, no, 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 no. Like, I prepped it for you when, yeah, in reality, exactly. when in reality, like they don't even want anything on your face because makeup stays better without layers of, of moisturizer underneath it for a long day of work. But we know that it's kind of like a layer of a barrier to protect your skin. So, you know, you give and you take. Yeah, you know that you you figured it out. It's really it's really important to prep your skin for any treatment which is coming, and especially makeup, which doesn't have real skincare ingredients and is really right. just like a, a a mask on it. But <clears throat> it's it's important to um, you know get this um, foundation of good skincare. And um, you just mentioned vitamin C, and I want to say something to this very quickly because it's so important and um, it's part of my philosophy. So everything which keeps skin barrier functioning and, and, and strong is really, really the key to good skin. And um, the vitamin C is a little bit, it's a big thing. You know, everybody's talking about vitamin C serum and most vitamin C serum have a very high concentration of vitamin C. The problem with high concentrated vitamin C is that it um, destroys or disrupts skin barrier. So vitamin C is so good up to a percentage of 5%. And this is clinically um, shown in studies. So Oh, so I could, I could be destroying my skin right now with my vitamin C and not even know. No. I mean, probably, probably not. And maybe you have to have a good C. And I just um, created the good C, which is actually launching next month. I'm going to t um, send it to you that you have definitely the good C. Good. I and you can use your vitamin C serum. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's true that um, now, you know, when people go to the dermatologist, the most asked problem is that um, people talk or uh, complain about sensitivity and redness in their skin. Not so I much- I started getting that. I just, and it was after I had Isaac and I'm sure that yes. your body, your, I'm sure your skin changed after you had Charlie. Like it just, it just does. Like no matter what, like you, something on you is going to change after you have a baby. And mine was my hair, my hairline fell out and my skin got a little bit more sensitive and red here and on my skin. Yeah. So. Definitely hormonal changes. Um, congratulations, by the way, oh, to your little you. one. Thank so you. cute. It's the best. Yeah. Um, but these hormonal changes and, and causing sensitivity can um, definitely also, you know, it's good to adjust um, your skincare routine depending on your changes in your skin and sensitivity. So yeah. maybe we will send you the good C. We will send you the scalp serum if Malcolm not already has done that. The scalp serum you will love. Okay. Yeah, you should check what about it. The calming? Do I need the calming serum too? I have that Amazing. One. That Takes one. down redness in seconds. It's amazing. Right. And I'm sure I also sent the, the products for Isaac. So um, Yes. I, oh, they're so cute. The baby sperm. So cute. I have a six-year-old. I created that for Pepper. My six-year-old, 
when she was born, I was going crazy and said, oh, I only can use the things I, 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 I created myself. So I created a little line for Pepper and then everybody wanted it. So I, 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 I produced them and they're so good. They're really good. Thank you. That's such a great idea. You know, that, that just goes to show like you saw a hole in a market and you went and you filled it. I, I, um, I attest to that. Yeah, the thing is, you know, um, I actually go in product development when I feel like I need something for myself or for my family or, mm -hmm. you know, my friends or my patients ask me, you know, I have that and that problem and then I want to solve the problem. So we, I really want to have in the household everything sturm. So that's why I also created something for Pepper and, um, you know, everything in this line is basically um, created to the request of patients, which I actually quite like but the products is there's so many right now and um it's pretty fun but i want to find a solution for everyone who has skin and skin issues and symptoms and so i am very excited for you to um start the, the I'm routine so i'm so I want, to, I want to know what you think i'll let you know no for sure thank you so um so makeup arts well, is there anyone who inspired you um, when you're younger with your skincare or anyone who taught you things, you know, you know with actually, washing your face? Now, it's so funny. Like my mother, she grew up, she was a farmer and um, her, her family migrated to America from Germany, actually. Oh, and wow. Yes. And so they are corn farmers in Nebraska and growing up, she picked all the corn off of the ears and she never wore sunscreen and it makes oh, wow. like the hair on my back stand up. And she is a type of person where she moisturizes her face and she washes it in the shower, but that's it. And I think now I'm the one that's encouraging her to like, wash your face, use this serum. You know, like I do get an yeah. influx of products at times and I'm like, you should try this mom. So um, growing up, I really didn't have that's anybody. Great. Yeah. I didn't have anybody to teach me about skincare until I got into the modeling industry. And then I slowly picked things up from, I needed a dermatologist at one point because I had an ingrown hair that would not come out. And then she was like, what's going on in your skin? And I was like, I don't know, you tell me. So it's like <laughs> trial and error. And then I, you know, I've tried a million facialists in New York city. And now I, I, um, I love my facialist now. And it's just about like, it's about asking figuring out and trying products, but also knowing what's in the products that I'm now learning um, because it's incredibly important, but I have, it's all self-taught at this point, but I feel like my skin is really resilient. There's, there's like, you can do a lot of stuff to yeah. it and it just bounces back into, um, into like kind of like where it needs to be. I think you, yeah, you have not a complicated skin and um, I right. think, yeah, resilience. It's combination. Great. Yes. And I think uh, another problem in these days, you know, um, you know, the, the young generation is also addicted to the phone and they're addicted to knowledge and they want to know what's going on and they want to do what the adults are doing. So they're looking for anti-aging products and there is this mask and this fun product and let's get this at CVS. And so there's a lot of, um, you know, trying out on young skin which is um you know pretty harmful for the skin because it's too much on your skin kids get sensitivity early they get you know perioral yeah. dermatitis they, they they suffer a lot already from this um overusing of products and i think it's almost better to you know go for the less is more which is my approach as well you know you don't need to have like a you know 10 step skincare routine you know you don't need that you just need like the, the really good things and just a few, you know, um, skincare steps and, and, and that's about it. So in this uh, matter, it's actually good at, um, you know, you didn't grow up, you know, you know, um, you know, sitting on your phone, trying, you know, no product. So I definitely think that helped you in the long run, you know? Yeah. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so how did pregnancy change? you know, My everything. Skin. Yeah. Well, the biggest change for me, it was a few things. I got lots of stretch marks on my lower belly. Um, and I moisturized, moisturized, moisturized. And it was just the last two weeks of my pregnancy. And it was just like, boom. And I was like, well, I know. it is what it is. Here we go. But it's fine. My mom had them. And I think that, you know, in a way you can kind of see your future by what your mother had. 
Um, and uh, my whole hairline fell out. And I now have these gorgeous, I call them new growth bangs, but uh, they're just beautiful. Yeah, coming back. Coming back. <laughs> what do we do for our babies? Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, oh my God. And I, during my pregnancy, my skin was totally fine. But now after I've got, I got a little bit of back acne and I got some, I wouldn't, call it melasma by any means, but like a little bit darker, bigger freckles Yeah, and the redness, the redness here. I have a mirror behind me. So that's why I'm like looking at myself <laughs> a little bit redness here. And then on my chin a little bit. And I know that my mother is susceptible to rosacea. So I'm like telling myself like, it's not rosacea, it's not rosacea, but you know, you can't help but hear that in your mind anyway. So those are the things that have changed. And now it's just a matter of like, a little bit different upkeep um but i'm excited to try your calming serum because i feel like that'll be yeah. nice at night right i think the calming serum is it's like my house pharmacy and it's a combination of um so many different herbs you know it's just healing oh. and um, takes down redness helps you know after waxing after any kind of treatment after oh, you know okay. you have of course That's mosquito true. bites yeah I, anything you know when uh, when pepper has a cut i put it on it's like you know it's it's like a healing device in a way so tried it. it's you know i i used it on, on on my little one you know right away so whenever there's something where you say it needs some healing it's good it's like you know when you are somewhere and you have an aloe vera plant and you put it on yeah. as a healing yeah. device that's similar. The, the coming serum is in a way something like that, like a little house pharmacy, you know? Oh, that's good to know for Isaac if he ever cuts himself open, which, hello, he's a little boy. He's definitely going to do that. <laughs> he's a little boy. My, my, my six-year-old is like a boy. She wants to be a boy and she's like oh, climbing everything. And so That's like, so great. I love it. I was just like everywhere. I was like that. I, oh my gosh, I was such a tomboy. It was... Me was, too. It's, it's so that's fun what? to be like that. That's why we are not beauty junkies. That's why we are not beauty junkies. That's why we're like, okay, it's like just a moisturizer and cleanser. Yeah, Great. It's simple. Let's keep it moving. I have too many things to get done in this world. I know. I totally, I totally get that. But you know, um, lots of people who get pregnant, mothers who were pregnant, went to pre through pregnancy, suffer. You know, you know, some get like a little few spots. Other get like real last mind. You know, um. All my products are safe to use during pregnancy oh. and um you know I, I i think that's important i wouldn't want to use a product which wasn't safe in pregnancy because yeah. you know so well, that's you wonder the products that aren't safe during pregnancy like what's how would you use them but you know one of the product like retinol everybody said do not use retinol during pregnancy and even now i'm still breastfeeding and it's like retinol is a big no-no so none of your products have retinol in them I, I, you know, the deal with retinol then. I, I'm 33 and everybody's screaming retinol at me. You see, there's me coming um, against the mainstream. <laughs> you know, my, my career actually started in the orthopedic and I worked against inflammation in joints and I translated this knowledge into the skin and I created something which is called vampire facial today or blood facial. I created yeah. this on the idea of bringing anti-inflammatory proteins from your own body made by your own cells into the skin. And I think that is um, an idea taking inflammation out of your skin, which is very important um, to keep skin from destructing, um, from um, aging, from hyperpigmentation, from any skin concern, because every skin concern goes together with inflammation. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about um, retinol, retinoids, or um, acid peels or glycolic or any of those harsh ingredients, what it does, it over exfoliates your skin. It basically not only take, uh, takes off dead skin cells, but also take off healthy skin cells. Mm -hmm. The advantage or the anti-aging effect would be if you take off skin layers, you probably also help with pigmentation, you help with um, right. you know, fine lines, etc. But what you do at the same time is you make your skin super vulnerable. You make your skin, um, you know, no skin barrier, no protection tool, no, no mature skin, skin cells, skin cells get destroyed. They have to regrow. They don't regrow that fast in such a quality. And you cause a lot of inflammation in your skin. And by weakening your skin barrier, 
water from the skin can leave. There is a lot of disadvantage to this idea of um, really um, resurfacing or taking healthy skin layers off. And since I'm an anti-inflammatory doctor, I recommend strongly against it because you you kind of, you, you're destructive to your skin. And um, why would we, we're so good to our bodies. You know, we eat a certain way. We try to give the nutrients to our, to our body, to stay healthy, to keep our immune system going. And um, why would we attack our skin? And actually, if it says it's not really recommended to use during pregnancy, the question would be, why would we use it anyway? You know, and also remember everything we put on our skin also gets delivered into our system. You know, right. um, it's not just kept outside, you know, it can enter in our skin. There's a constant exchange between the skin and our, our system. So that's why I advise strongly against it. It's an anti-inflammatory approach. And why is companies like to promote, right um, okay. you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm... I've definitely done my fair share of like microchemical, you know, like on the spot peels and you look at your skin and you're like, oh, all those those like scattered freckles are gone. Like I do love my, like I color in my beauty marks, you know, and I think that they're beautiful, yeah. but you think that you're doing something to prevent yourself from getting more sunspots, more wrinkles, more fine lines. But that's so interesting to hear about how you're making your skin more susceptible. I mean, I feel like this is a masterclass that I am learning a lot right now. Thank you. But that's, you know, it's, it's very interesting that you say that because you think you're doing something anti-aging, but in reality, if you think about that you keep your skin, uh, that you make your skin vulnerable, you make your skin actually attackable for even more stresses from outside. And you know what it causes? Hyperpigmentation, premature aging, even skin cancer. You know, it's like, well, you know, we need to learn all that yeah. in, in, you know, so that you can make your choices in your skincare routine. And that's why I also do skin school because I, I think there's a lot of education necessary because lots of the young generation, they just go in the store and say, oh, anti-aging and glycolic pads and this and then I just do it. And, you know, imagine like this, this young skin and this really like, you know, I, I, you know, I always call it like virgin skin, you know, attacking with all those ingredients, you know, um, that, that is just, it's just, you know, fatal to the skin and you know in the long run in the long run it makes you actually age faster you know and yeah and i am never doing a chemical peel again because of this conversation yeah i i, I would just straight strongly advise not to and you know what the ultimate test so you tried you tried a lot of things you know and and that's good you know it's like okay we try and my advice is if you want to do something more aggressive why don't go to a doctor say why you want to do it you mm. know the reason maybe there's like um terrible acne scars something you can't get rid of by itself and then you maybe the the, the doctor will advise you you know what we do lays and we do some peels whatever but the side effects are one two three four you have to do it during this period this and that you shouldn't do this as a home treatment at home. You know, if there's something you need to really address, go to a dermatologist and have it done with a professional and not at home at your own ideas, you know, and you have, yeah, and you have done it. And now let's do, you know, super healthy skin and let's see what the difference is. I, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely worth a try. Great advice. I mean, I love that I'm learning something in this interview. You know, we are all always, that's that's the fun thing about life. We are always learning. Learning never stops, you know, and with every step we take every day, we should take something with us. You know, and the other thing with the skin, you know, we have a skin cycle to every 28 days. You know, our skin cells need to really go grow fully and completely. Yes. So, um, you know, we also always have to give ourselves, if we do some treatments to give the cells the time to regrow back our skin you know and if you do it every week you know if you do something like that it so never has the how do you how do you feel about toner for skin like mine so there are different ways of toning you know we have a balancing toner of which you probably also have yeah. in your box which is amazing and i personally never really used a toner less is more but what i started now i started because of wearing the 
mass, yes. you know, the patient mass. And that's where I'm getting all like the, the clogged. I mean, I yes. where I'm getting yes. So, yes. so much of the extractions in here now. Oh, yes. So, so the thing with that is I, I started using religiously my balancing toner and that's a toner, which is hydrating. It's um, balancing your skin barrier. It's um, rich on hyaluronic um, acid, vitamin E, pentanol, um, um, beta glucan. It's a, such a great, healthy way of balancing your pH, which is necessary mm -hmm. for our microbiome on our skin. But, um, you know, it doesn't destroy your skin. And it's like really great to keep the bi microbiome, the pH, especially in this area, very stable and um, close to the skin's pH. So that's why I keep using it. It really, really helps. Mm. But there's also other ways of toning and um, lots of toners are quite aggressive. So I th one tip I would give everyone is, you know, we're sending out ingredient lists, good ingredients, bad ingredients. And, um, you know, our team can send you guys um, the good ingredients, bad ingredients, and then you can look on your products at home, okay. you know, which ones are good, which ones are maybe not so good. Don't use toners which are doing the same resurfacing purpose. You know, that is the same. I don't want to name anyone, but, you know, when you see that your cheeks are red and, you know, then you, and it burns and tingles, that's not a good toner. Right. Okay. Good to know because my philosophy is if it burns, it's working. You see, they use, I'm so happy we guys are talking because that's the perception of a lot of people. It's like, okay, now it really hurts, you know, go through it. Now it's working. Now I get the job done. It's exactly the opposite. Burn and pain is a signal of our body to, <laughs> you know, oh God, don't do that. Stop what you're doing, you know? So it's like, that's really the signal. Don't do it. So if something burns on your skin, wash it off immediately. Wash it off okay. right away. Good to know. I'm going to throw that toner <laughs> away. That one. My other question is, and you know, sorry to flip the table on you. How do you feel about guasa? About know, what? Guasa, you know, like the tool that looks like this or whatever, and women are going like, oh, oh. the the, the derm, dermaplating. There's well, there's there's all kinds of tools now, right? They've got like the roller. They've got the roller yes. with the spikes. I saw Naomi Campbell doing the one with the yes. spikes and she was putting the serum on her face after. But then there's yes. this little tool that my acupuncturist used. And it's usually like a jade thing and it's got like a funny little shape on it. And then she just kind of like, she's like, I'm going to take the lines out here and here. Like, how do you feel about people like pulling and manipulating their skin like that? I would always say careful with um, at home, you know, if you bring your doctor office at home. And th this is not just, you know, tools. This is all, also acid pits, everything where you think, yeah. oh, this probably I should be doing at the doctor's office. Don't do it at home. There are exceptions and exceptions, you know, when you get the education on it. And right. um, for example, you know, depending on your skin type and your skin concern, you can do a microneedling, what Naomi does, yeah? Right. Um, but it shouldn't, at home, you shouldn't use a um, longer needle than 0.25. So don't go crazy with one with 1.0 or something or 1.5. Stay really, really um, low on needle size. And then you can use our hyaluronic serum and roll it in. Great. Okay. But, you okay. know, get it vice first. I think that's really important. And then, you know, um, there's dermablading, what people do at home. I would yeah. never recommend anything like that. I would that stay works. away from yeah. it. That really is aggressive to the skin. A jade roller super good do it massaging is always nice for your skin not a strong massage always keep it you know nothing should hurt you know yeah. massages need to stimulate our skin cells to produce collagen massages shouldn't be oh my god i need to really do um, like a gymnastic or you know workout on your skin because you know our skin is also fragile. We have muscles, we have tendons, we have, mm -hmm. you know, um, subcutaneous um, fat tissue. We have our bone structure. It's all kind of, you know, woven into each other. You know, if we're too, too rough, we can also hurt and destroy um, structures in our skin and our face. So mm -hmm. I would always do everything in moderation. So, um, yeah, massaging tools, I always would say okay. yes. All right. So I can do a little massage. 
And yes. I, now I need to get one of those needle things, but. <laughs> Yeah, we sent we sent you we sent you the right oh, one. Oh, I got a little one. Oh, I can't. Wait. Oh, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So then you do you put the hyaluronic serum and um, we will send you the ampules because the ampules are great because they are highly um, more concentrated and you put the ampule with the hyaluronic serum on your skin and then you needle over it one time one time you needle over it you can do your neck you needle over it you can also do your hands it's nice and 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 you do that maybe every two, three weeks, but only do it when your skin is really um, ready and healthy. So if you feel like you're red right now, let's Not heal good. your skin first and wait a little bit until your skin is healed. And then you start that because it's nice okay. for, you know, enhancing your um, skin matrix. It's good anti-aging, boosting, boosting the skin. And with a small needle and hyaluronic serum, you also don't cause inflammation, you know? Got it. Okay, great. Wow. Yeah. I'm learning so much, Dr. Stern. Thank you. <laughs> now, I find it so interesting. You know, I, 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 I think it's, I think it's so interesting. Also, my background is not dermatology. I come from the science. You know, I come, I, I, I'm a scientist. I'm orthopedic well, doctor. I learned so that's much. That's important. I think that's important. I think that more of the products that we know and love should be showing us like, you know, truly what's in our products. I mean, there's not one thing that I buy at the grocery store that I don't look at the label. So why am I not looking at the label of what I'm putting on my skin? I totally agree. And you know, it's, um, I think also marketing is totally obsolete. It's old fashioned. I think the truth really matters. And that's why more and more people are interested in, in the real, in the, in the real science and efficacy and, you know, um, real reviews and real learning, you know? Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. So we, we, we will get you on the right um, routine and do like a total health project. Thank you. Um, I want to, I want to tighten up my jawline and I want to make sure that my um, freckles don't quadruple. And I just want to prevent those are my things. I created this line called brightening line, you know, and this brightening line is actually great because it loosens the agglomeration of the yellow and dark spots, you know, these spots yeah. where we say it's like big freckles or a little pigmentation issues. That's just like a agglomeration of the melanin, you know, what we have in our skin naturally, which comes to the surface when, when the sun is out as a, as a natural protection tool. And, you know, and if, when it's agglomerated and it's an enzyme, which is called tyrosinase, which does that, um, then we get like these um, little spots. And, you know, Got one it. really great um, serum you should use as the um, super anti-aging serum because it has glutathione, which helps to lose it, but also the brightening, the oh. brightening serum. Now, do you use them at the same time or it's like one in the morning, one in the evening? Great question. It's, um, we have a lot of serums um, to tell you the truth, but it's not like that I use everything every day, every morning, every night. I, you know, in the morning I use my hyaluronic serum. I wait 20 seconds until it's dissolved into the skin. Then I put my anti-pollution drops on, which protects from the HEV light from mm -hmm. the phones. When you're on your Zoom calls or whatever you do digitally, put the anti-pollution drops on, wait 20 seconds, then you put your brightening serum and then, you know, your, your, your face cream. And in the evening, what I do is the super anti-aging serum, the night serum, and, and, and my face cream. So I have like- And you do it in layers, not yeah. like all together. You can, you know, sometimes when I have no time, I mix the hyaluronic serum with the anti-pollution drops in the morning, I mix it together, put it on next. So, you know, you okay. can also mix it. Or the sun drops you mix in your cream, mix it together. Yeah, love that. You know, you can save steps, you know? So you figure it out a little bit um, for yourself, um, you know, what works the best for your skin. And sometimes, you know, I just feel like, oh, I used the mask today or the calming serum, but then I don't use other products. So I right. switch it up a little bit. Yeah. And also, I mean, you're so knowledgeable and about all the ingredients. So it's probably super easy for you to just be like flow in of this and that. But like for someone like me, I'm like, no, 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 I need a system. I need to know exactly what I'm doing in the morning and exactly what I'm doing at night. And if there's too many steps, I'm just not going to do it. So I totally agree. You know, that's why we, we do FaceTime consultations with, um, you know, our, our patients oh, and we um, individualize routines, morning, night, 
twice a week, whatever. And I, I would do this for you too. I would um, write it down for you. And then, you know, exactly this and this and morning, night. And <laughs> I'm so and you know excited. And you know what's really great? I want to tell you that I really love, and I still do it today. I take bath with my with my with my kid, and you know what I put in the bath, and that's what I did from the beginning. Um, we never got bubble baths. Only um, Pepper puts a gallon of milk in the bathtub. It's so great for your skin, for the baby's skin. Try it; it's fantastic. Like whole milk. Whole milk poured in, you would freak out. It's so great with hot water a hot water bath yes like a like a yeah warm water bath um and you know it's so great for baby skin you know sometimes they have like dry patches somewhere yeah, i had a couple of like you know baby rashes like what baby has yes it. we did like the oatmeal bath but i didn't even know about oatmeal. the milk. Ah. It's, it's it's, it's life-changing and um, and also, you know, if you have dry pad, the body cream for the kids is amazing. The face cream, it's yeah. just like also with eczema, it's so great. I'm Only the best it. ingredients. Yeah, well, I know because I'm talking to the doctor expert here. <laughs> <laughs> I love your podcast, by the way. Pretty big deal. Oh. It's so so smart thank you i know that's like i'm trying not to interview you but it's really hard for me not to because i, I love it oh good but well good that's important to love it um because <laughs> i am a very curious person which is why i started the podcast because I, I just i want to have my own personal master class every week about something that i'm passionate about people that have inspired me and um, we just launched this week, Patrice Colors from the Black Lives Matter movement. And it's just, you know, we've also had Demi Lovato on talking about body positivity, Love her. body acceptance, and Gail King talking about her career and how she how she's gotten to the top as a as a um, journalist and a black woman. So it's great because my curiosity is met. I get to learn something. I get to walk into these interviews and I'm sure it's very similar to you. Like you walk into an interview and you're like, what am I going to learn today? What is, you know, what is it that I'm going to take away from this? And um, it's really, it's, it's, it's empowering to have your own show. I have so much fun making it. Yeah. I'm enjoying it quite myself. You know, when, when um, I started, I just thought I was, it was just when COVID hit and I was like, Okay, I'm a doctor. I can't work on the front line, which I would have yeah. loved. Right. What can I do for our community? And I was thinking about my teenage kids, um, my husband's kids in Washington. They couldn't go to school. And I was like, why don't I start skin school and, you know, tell them what they should do to their skin, with their skin, what should they pay attention to, what are the no-goes? And we started skin school. And, and it's been such a great journey because um, you feel like how, how much wanted it is. And um, mm. yeah, and I, it's, it, I'm learning so much myself. It's what you say. You get inspired every, every day, you know? Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, again, masterclass, a masterclass for yourself selfishly, but <laughs> <laughs> I need to tell you something because you're also, um, you know, very act activist and, uh, you know, really following the, 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 the beliefs of, um, you know, you know, what socially needs to be done. And you know what I, I created like five years ago a, a line for darker skin tones. And oh. was, that was quite interesting because, you know, um, it was actually Angela Bassett who inspired me because she said, oh my God, your products are amazing. They changed my skin. I'm like, okay, Angela, your skin is already amazing. And she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. Nobody really understands my skin. Our skin is different. And this is the first line which really gets it. And I'm like, Okay, so let's study, um, let's study melanin rich skin. So I studied and I did a lot of research and I, I, I came out, you know, I, 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 I found a few most amazing ingredients um, and I put it all in a line. Angela helped me formulating and, um, you know, because oh, it's like, it's like, yeah, because, you know, face cream needs just to be right, yes. you know, so yes. I needed to have her help to go back and forth and back and forth so we um 
we, we created that um, line for darker skin tones. And it was very interesting how retail, I, I thought this is the biggest thing ever, you know, there's so many, and, and so many who have like, you know, a melanin skin and hyperpigmentation issues and, um, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of problems. And mm -hmm. the, the retailers wouldn't take this line. And I'm like, what, what? just a few, not just a few retailers. And, and I was like, why would they take the light? It's so strange. So, you know, it's in, in, in a way, you know, there was like this racism in the beauty industry. And I was like, oh, at yeah. one point it's like, you know what? I pull all my products from you if you don't take this line, you know? Wow. Good for you, Barbara. Yeah. It's like, this is, you know, I'm, I'm you know what? And I have to tell you, I'm, I, I really go for my beliefs. That's why I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so, that's why I'm so inspired by you as well, because it's, you need to go for your belief. And, you know, even if it's sometimes uncomfortable and even if you risk something or you lose or whatever, you cannot, you cannot lose that path of your belief. So I thought it wasn't fair, you know, and I thought there's a, there's, you know, there's so much acceptance for this line in the, in the community. And I started um, to do round tables, you know, with um, journalists and, lots of people and, and we keep doing that as a breakfast um you know since four years um now we changed to digitally but um you know it's very inspiring you know the way it's changing now and um and and I, i'm i'm now of course it's getting more acceptance each day and more more and more companies are working on a darker skin tone line now because it's yeah. so interesting that that companies didn't want to buy it and also um good for you for put you know stomping your foot down and saying like i'm just going to pull everything because that just made a point to them but i am going to need those products for the melanin as well for my husband because his problem is like dark spots where like his beard line is here and then like he gets a couple of dark spots right there and he doesn't know what to do about it and otherwise he gets a little bit of white heads around his nose and then that's it but he's you know and then it's perfect for him he will love this line because it's also antibacterial it's evening out the skin tone it's extra anti-inflammatory you know the reason the the, the most reason why um, people with melanin rich skin go to dermatologists, number one, acne, number two, um, um, hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. And that's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So inflammation is a reason to get hyperpigmentation. That's why take everything away which can cause inflammation in you. And inflammation is redness, burning, all this kind of stuff. So inflammation to the side. And, you know, lots of... Um, men who get ingrown hair, it's also inflammation or little breakouts, they pop inflammation and then it leaves these spots, you know, and the pigmentation spots and that's harder to get rid of than um, to get rid of inflammation. So I would say, and you know, by the way, this line, I use that line, you know, it's not like, oh, you need to have a certain um, skin color to use this Only line. No, it's for everybody. Okay, got it. <laughs> everybody. But, um, I would send it to you guys. He will love it. He will love it. Great. Thank you. We're going to be a full-on Dr. Sturm house. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Have you thought about making cleaning products, like household cleaning products? Oh, my God. You have no idea what I've thought of. You know, I'm like, I'm like Willy Wonka. I'm just <laughs> like, oh, this and this. You know what I actually... Uh, what I actually I'm working on a detergent because that is also you know related to skin and you know I'm, I'm working on a bunch of products um you know related to you know more broader um usage you know but um cleaning product no and it, I think that is also mm. that that is something I think a lot of people are also looking into gladly you know people with more knowledge on cleaning products than me yeah, I mean, because it's a part of, I mean, I've gone to holistic doctors before and they're like, oh, you are allergic to cleaning products, like with a lot of, I mean, whatever big word they end up saying. Yes. I'm like, oh, okay, so don't use those, use this. And it's interesting because it's like, if there was just like cleaning products that were made that were like uber clean and you know they're clean and you know that if they get on your skin or if they're in the air and they're not going to, you know, give you a breakout, I would buy them. I would, I'd buy stock in them. In fact, <laughs> I, there's a company who actually mm -hmm. does that. They sent me some, I think they sent me some to LA. I need to look up the name. I will, I will, when I find it, I will, I will give it to mm -hmm. you. 
um, because they, they wanted me, me to try it. I think it's, it's, it's actually true. And sometimes probably the simple house recipes for cleaning, you know, from earlier <laughs> dates are probably better than, um, than to go full on um, chemicals, you know, and, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a bunch of products, um, you know, mm -hmm. I can't spill too many secrets, but I will send you some samples to to test because you will probably uh, appreciate that because it okay. also, uh, you know, whatever we wash ourselves with and hair wash and whatever, yeah. that is also, you know, that's why the um, the, the the baby um, shower gel, yes, it's so good. It's so clean. It won't foam the hair, but, you know, who cares anyway? Yeah. You know, so much they don't, you know, unless they have like, yeah, you know, my, my, my kid now is six. She has like so much hair, you know, and then it becomes a little more difficult and she wants something which smells, which Storm doesn't have. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry, honey. No. Um, but but I want to send you some samples. You probably appreciate that. Um, Thank you. I appreciate, I do appreciate that. I I will be your guinea pig. <laughs> I, I'm happy. I'm happy. I will send you not everything. I am um, totally dedicated to get your... Uh, get your opinion to that <laughs> thank you will you be at home for christmas or are you are you going somewhere you know my sister-in-law is about to have a baby any day now and she lives in dallas so we are going to go to dallas for christmas and we're going to stay there for a few weeks and be with the other grandma and grandpa and all of justin's side of the family oh so nice i love dallas actually yeah it's really nice there um yeah. It, it's beautiful properties, great, great people. So yeah, we're excited. I love the people. They're so fun. Yes. They <laughs> yes, they are. I, I, I always love going to Dallas because they're like uplifting and always like ready Big to. Personalities. I know, I know, I know. I love it. So yeah, this sounds amazing. I don't know. Do we have time for some questions from the audience or because we, I, I could talk to you forever. Yes, I know. I feel like we could talk forever. And when I come in for a facial, we'll fully catch up. You know, whenever whenever you um, are ready for a sturm facial, I, I will organize this um, for Perfect. you in New York. We have yeah. it, uh, in the new year. Yeah, for all of you guys at home. <laughs> you have 15 more minutes. Okay, should we, um, should we, there are some, you know, we always get questions from the audience and I always find it so um so cool to 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 answer as much as we can oh yeah so where are they here um you mean my where are the questions from the audience oh what advice would you give your younger self skincare and beyond oh my god well hello younger self <laughs> you've been through a lot girl you will make it through you know the biggest thing and, and it's hard because when you're younger, it's like hard to hear advice because you think you know, because you think nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody's been through this. Yes, we have. We have been through all of it. And the best thing that you can do, no matter what you're going through, whether it's a body issue, a mental health issue, a, a relationship issue, school, job, worth is to ask someone older than you. And when I say older, I mean like 10 years older at least than you. Ask them for advice, ask them for help and figure out, you know, maybe their method of how they handled their situation is gonna be different from how you handled yours, but get advice. Just remember, you're not alone in any of these situations because there are other people that have gone through the exact same thing. And were you good about that? Or were you like a little more, you know, didn't ask so much for advice? No, I had, you know, the, the thing is my dad was an entrepreneur and he always told me, he was like, Ashley, never be afraid to ask for help. Never be afraid to ask questions. And, um, and I, and I took his advice to heart and I did ask a lot of questions. I can't say that I had mentors growing up necessarily, but I had, um, I asked a lot of questions and I was very inquisitive. That's amazing because sometimes, you know, from my experience, you know, Lots of people think, oh, maybe you ask them for advice. I always felt like there was an agenda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's also sometimes hard to pick the ones you, you give competence, you right. know, for the thing you want to ask. So probably the people you know the best, like 
you know your family members uh, or like like long-term friends or yeah God mother yeah. and I think now it's you know you, you can find mentors easily yeah yeah also the word changed to very being very supportive what I enjoy a lot when I was younger there was more and especially I have to say in Germany there was more jealousy than anybody you know giving you respect and you know and and and, and for what you did but these days I have to say there's so many people who support and support each other and what do you need and it can help and it's so great about this this time we are in that's what I find what do you think I agree a hundred percent I mean it's it is a lot different now than it was then I guess but um everything is about balance and everything is about knowing that if you can find a balance for yourself, because your balance will be different than everybody else's around you. But if you can find a balance for yourself, then you can really make it through the hard times. Great. So what's one skincare product you can't live without? Um, oh my gosh, I have such a good one. and It's right next to me. I, I mean, like, I think like, you know, the one that everybody says is sunscreen, but for me, it's like face misters, rose water. Um, is there even rose water in this? No, that's that's hyaluronic hyaluronic serum. That's hyaluronic serum in the mist. That's super hydration. Oh my gosh! So this is better than rose water. See, this is what I do all day. Like I have makeup be before. I know. After. This is it right here for me, baby. I, I cannot be without. You like the mist. Oh. <laughs> These are two I things that I like. These are two things that I like. I like face misters and I like vitamin gummies. If my vitamin comes in a gummy, I will for sure take it. Yeah, I love it. I know that's such a thing, the vitamin gummies. I, 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 I know. It's like people love it. And it's also great. Kids love it. It's perfect. One thing for the mists, by the way just for everybody um, to know, because mist is not like, not the same like mist, you know? And um, if a mist is made with natural ingredients, great. But we always have to remember that, you know, a mist we spray on our face, we also inhale. It comes yeah. into our lungs, yes. you know? Never forget that, you know? Because, you know, sometimes you sit on a makeup chair and, um, and, and then, you know, or whatever, fresh. someone sprays something on it. It's like, oh, oh, stop, 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 stop. You know, I want to know what's in that mist. You know, it's it can be quite dangerous to breathe that in. So that's, um, you know, what I learned when I created that mist, because we haven't thought about that ever. You know, who would think about it, that we breathe it in? And, and, and that's why ingredients in the mist matter more than anything. Yeah. And the lip balm. Isn't it so good? This is so mm. good. Look, I have the little mm. one. I have the little one. Oh, you have a teeny tiny one. Teeny, tiny, tiny one. Oh, yeah. This lip balm took me over four years, over 35 samples to make. What? You know why? Why? I tell you why. I, you know, I'm such a nerd. And, you know, I, everyone is on the search for the perfect lip balm always. Always. And why is lip balm never great? Because there are lots of mineral oils, petroleum base, which makes it feel good, you know, yeah. but it actually sucks the hydration out of your skin and makes you super addicted. You have to do it again and do it again and do it again. And this is a combination only of the best oils, beeswax and um, shea butter. And it's just so good because it really nourishes the lips. And what I, what I love, it brings out your lip color as well. I, I, I kind of like it because it gives like a lip glow. I mean, it's like, it's almost cheesy to say, but I love this one so much. And yeah. it's great for elbows and for cuticles and for whatever you want to use it. Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to, I'll be throwing this on my heels tonight. I think, I think, you know, I, I, you pick um, my favorites there already. And you know what? The mask, you need to try the mask. Oh, I'm excited. It's, Look, I have all of, see that right there? That's all your boxes. Yeah. yeah, the mask is my obsession. Actually, I understand this mask is my life savior. Ooh. You put it on, leave it on for at least 20 minutes until it dissolves into the skin. And then what you do, and that's great, you do your like a massage with your hand, but you rub it off. You take the, the, the mask off like this, you rub it off. It comes off in little, per, in little warms. Don't put water on it. And then put your hyaluronic serum and your face. You will freak out your skin 
will be so glowy and dewy and oh, perfect. Okay, so I do the mask and then I do it with my hands. Don't use water. Then I do you the hydro rub it off. hydraulic hydro hydraulic yeah, hyaluronic serum. Yes, yes. perfect, yeah. perfect. And then and then the face cream. Face cream. Okay, I'm doing it tonight. Perfect. Perfect. I, yeah, and you need to give me feedback. I know I need to know what you think. It's okay. um I'll tell you. I will tell you. Okay, so one more question. Okay. You uh, that's a deep question. Wait. Looking back on 2020, what has been your biggest highlight and what are you looking forward oh my god, it, in 2021. So that's a really big question. It is a big question, but you know, it's a good question because I think yes. this question makes me feel like we have to say something about 2020 and that like we have to we we know that it was a hard year we know it was a really tough year but I'm glad that they said what was the highlight because we have to pull the positivity out of 2020 um and for me it was having Isaac and being able to have the birth that I wanted with him I had a home birth and it was just an amazing experience um, and then being able and having the access to go to Nebraska where I'm from and stay in my mom's house that I grew up in for six months. I mean, like, and then to be with family, I mean, family is so important and it can be, you know, it's great and it's bad and everything in between, but, um, it's so important to have family around and 2020 really, you know, it, it expressed that to me even more on top of having a baby on top of ha the pandemic, but in 2021, what I'm really looking forward to is um, being able to travel again, finding some normalcy, um, not being afraid of lockdowns anymore. And um, Barbara, I learned so much. I am so grateful. Thank you for the products. I'm going to be doing the hydrolonic, you know, I can't even say it, but the creams and the things and the serums. And then I need my like step by step. So I'm counting on you, girl to give me the best skin of my life. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. You're such a superstar. Um, I'm sure everybody enjoyed it the same like me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you the most amazing holidays. And um, I, I really learned so much from you and um, you're wonderful. Thank you.